Today we are building this stylish wireless speaker with a Relic 2.1 amplifier board and slatted Keyhard wood speaker grill. The Relic product range is fantastic and makes integrating wireless audio capability into your DIY projects very easy. Uh, this 2.1 amplifier board is the basis of the project we are doing today. Relic has also added the ability to tune the response of your system via DSP and software called ACP Workbench. The entire system can be controlled via your smartphone and basic functions with a handy remote control. So let's go have a look and see how I built this speaker. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. With more than 800,000 customers worldwide and 18,000 plus PCB orders per day, JLC PCB is one of the leading PCB manufacturers in the world. Ordering PCBs at JLC PCB is easy. Click on quote now, upload your Gerber file, select the option from the easy to use web interface and order 5 PCBs for as little as $2. Delivery is quick and I received my boards after only one week after placing the order. The quality is top notch and it came packaged securely and safely. I really enjoy working with JLC PCB, so if you need a PCB for one of your own projects, I highly recommend placing your order with JLC PCB. Note that I have build plans available for purchase on my website for the speaker design and many of my other projects. The plans are very comprehensive and will list the parts and materials that you will need and show you step for step how to build this stylish speaker. Go to my website at soundblab.net to get these plans. There is a link in the description below or click the card top right. The speaker enclosure is made from 12mm or half inch MDF, but you can also use birch plywood in the same thickness. I first cut all the panels according to my cut list and then used PVA wood glue and an 18 gauge brad nailer to assemble the enclosure also using a few clamps here and there where necessary. These panels that make up the slot ports are rounded to avoid port noise and easier airflow within the port. The ports are tuned to give us somewhere between 35 and 40 Hz down at the minus 3 dB level for the subwoofer.
I made a cutout with my palm router and a flush trim bit where the in and outputs of the acrylic board can be accessed from. I forgot to film this so here you just see me following the shape to illustrate what I did. The four holes in the front baffle will accommodate three knobs for volume and crossover controls. They are essentially not really necessary and performs very little function once the system has been set up via the DSP software and then being able to control it via your smartphone app and the remote control. The fourth hole allows the IR receiver to receive signals from the remote control. The front baffle house the two full range drivers and the subwoofer and here I am marking out the positions on the front baffle before drilling the holes for the smaller full range drivers and using a jigsaw to cut out the hole for this larger subwoofer. On the inside of the holes for the full range drivers, I am also cutting a 45 degree bevel. This opens up the hole at the back of the driver to allow proper airflow and avoid sound bouncing back from the edge onto the speaker cone. This can cause some unwanted artifacts in the frequency response. Now the front baffle can be glued in place and we can start to sand and finish the enclosure. Here I am test fitting the Riddick board and it fits well with the knobs in place. Finishing starts with sealing the MDF with a sanding sealer. Normally two coats with sanding in between is good enough. The next step in finishing is to apply a coat or two of spray filler undercoat, then a normal undercoat and finally the top coat in two or three layers. Sanding in between with a 320 or 400 grit sandpaper will provide you with a good finish. 
Sometimes I will also apply a final layer or two of clear lacquer just to protect the top layer of color paint. Now comes the fun part where I start to cut the strips with a slatted grill. I'm using Kihart wood. This wood is dimensionally very stable, easy to work with and has beautiful details in the wood grain that pops when you apply a wax or oil. These are the support strips for the Kihart slats. I made them of MDF, but in hindsight I would rather use solid wood or birch plywood since the MDF can split easily when you use screws to fix them to the baffle later on in the project. A hole is drilled in the bottom of the enclosure for cables to go through and reach the speaker terminals on the back of the Aurelic amplifier board. The hole is plugged with some hot glue and I have done the same for the wires that run up to the full range drivers. The wood slat supports are fixed in place to the baffle with a few screws and the slats are glued in place with CA glue. The two wood slats that go on the outer edges of the grill are slightly deeper and this provided me with the perfect place to laser engrave the Sound Blab logo before fixing them into place, again with CA glue and a few squirts of accelerator. Banggood.com sent me this Atomstack A5 20 watt laser engraver. This is a very handy piece of kit and it has a work area of 410 by 400 millimeters. The machine is very well packaged and very easy to assemble. I think it only took me about 30 minutes. It is very easy to use but it does not come with any control software. However, I used Lightburn which is about $40 and it made getting up and running very simple. I highly recommend this machine. It works great. Uh, I'll include a purchase link to this machine in the description below. The Aurelic 2.1 amp board is fixed to the removable panel with PCB standoffs and a few screws. I 
can now put the assembly in place and cut the speaker wires to length, strip the ends and connect the speaker terminal to the wires. The amp assembly is glued to the foot piece and then secured to the bottom of the enclosure with a few screws. The full range drivers are Dayton Audio RS100s and the subwoofer the Tangband W5. The enclosure is stuffed with a dampening material, in this case I am using isotherm which is a green in colour and made from recycled plastic bottles. But it is essentially the same as Dacron or Polyfill that is typically used for this purpose. The speaker wires are soldered to the drivers and then screwed into place. The hole for the IR receiver is covered with a small piece of expanded aluminium mesh. This is easily cut with a pair of scissors and glued into place with CA glue. The Wi-Fi antenna can now be stuck to the enclosure. To finish the Kiart slats, I used the furniture oil and applied a few coats, letting it soak in for a few hours in between coats. Finally, I can fix the slatted grill to the enclosure and we are ready to take a few measurements and tweaking the DSP. ACP Workbench is a software that you can purchase from the Aurelic online store for $20 and it provides us with quite powerful DSP functions to tweak the 2.1 channel amplifier. Note though that it is for Windows only. Now I'm not going to go through every feature of the software but will show you what I did to tweak the measured frequency response of the system to get a very nice flat response curve. On the two full range drivers I applied a high pass filter at 200Hz and on the subwoofer a low pass filter at 200Hz. The subwoofer is also boosted with 6 decibels to bring it up to the SPR level of the full range drivers. The response from this is then tweaked by entering the values for the correction filter. In the build plan that you can purchase on our website I will also include a few filters that you can import into ACP Workbench without having to be able to take your own measurements. Once you have loaded the file, you can write it to the DSP board. Connection is made with a USB cable. Looking at this response graphs, we can see the original uncorrected response of the system in the light bright green. The dark green line is the subwoofer boosted with 6 dB and the blue line is the measured response with the correction filter applied from 400 Hz to 20 kHz. This is just one of the filters that I will supply with the build plans and others include correction from 200 Hertz to 20 kilohertz and also from 35 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The reason for this is that bass response will be different in your room and we can only expect accurate results from above somewhere between 200 and 400 hertz and upwards. And that's it, fairly simple and with great results. The sound quality from this board is really very very good. The system is capable of playing powerful bass and vocals and high frequencies are very accurate. 
Once you have this set up, you can make further bass and treble adjustments with the remote control if you feel it's necessary. So thank you all for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so yet. Like the video and if you want to get more behind the scenes content, please become a SoundBlab patron on Patreon. Don't forget if you want to build the speaker for yourself, then visit my website at soundblab.net to purchase the comprehensive build plans. Links to everything else is in the description below. So let's do a quick sound demo and until next time, adios.